Okay, let's uh, go online here. Let me see here. There we go. There we go. Okay, you got it. You're being we're being live streamed on uh, on uh, uh, Facebook, and we're being live streamed on or recorded at the same time. Let me just get myself centered here, and maybe a little bit of. Uh, Let's see here, a little little bigger. There we go. Okay. Hello. Why did I do this all beforehand? Because I'm an idiot. Okay, that's why. Let me see now. Let's get all our people in here. This is our Monday program, by the way. It's very simple and it's very nice because all these people are just terrific human beings. Look at them. They're all coming in here. Paul Eleven oh. and Marjorie Miller and Edward Berger. That's oh. right. That's right. Uh, also, uh, Charlene Solis, and of course, Mandy. Hello, Mandy. And Hello. Also, uh, in track with Len LaFrisco and Charlie Wallace. It looks like, are you having trouble with your sound, Charlie, or your picture? Well, I guess he's having trouble with his sound. <laughs> I would imagine. But, uh, he, I guess he doesn't know why. Can you hear us, Charlie? No. <laughs> Let's see. Oh boy. I love the look on the face. It's kind of <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 Uh, okay. Well, we'll 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 hope and pray that Charlie can sign in here because we like his participation. How are y'all doing? Good. Yeah. Good. How are you? Yeah, I'm okay. You know. Oh, I have a new. I got a new computer. Do you see how big my screen is? Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. Oh, what what kind of computer did you get? An iMac. An i an iMac. Oh, oh, very nice. Yeah. Uh, now you yeah. have you been a PC person in the past or or Mac? No, it's I've always I've always liked the the uh, uh, the iMacs, but um, I have I have a a grandson who knows how to. I mean, if it worked for him, I didn't. I. I yeah. I'd be like totally useless. <laughs> but he, he, I, um, I purchased it and and uh, got all my my um, information transferred. And uh, That's I mean, nice. I'm looking at this. You can even see in my living room where Marjorie's paintings are. Probably. Oh, oh, <laughs> you, oh well, let's see here. Oh, yeah. which ones are yours, Marjorie? In the top right. In the oh, top right. Me, yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Pull his left. Yeah, you can't see it too well, but uh, you can see a lot more than you used to. Oh, okay. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, and uh, how much? Can I ask how much you, it cost you? Well, I I got an education discount, so um, uh, it was uh, about I think it's, and I got Apple Care, and I, I just do what I'm told, you know, because <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> uh, it was about uh, fourteen hundred. That's not bad. Really? Which isn't bad for I think with Apple Care it's probably a, a more I think the, the, the um but you didn't need much memory and things like that right you, you know not compared to I'm mean, not I have no idea uh, how, I mean I have a lot of stuff on there a lot of photos and stuff but um I have a problem where I have to have a huge amount of memory available to me in one way or another you know yeah but uh, you know uh, anybody well, you're in the, you're in the cloud aren't you. What do you mean? I'm I'm in the cloud. I don't know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm in the cloud. Maybe. Alex, what you came dangerously close to sounding like Trump. You're like huge. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'll go there, brother. <laughs> and I'm supposed to continue being nice to you, huh, Mandy? <laughs> Where where's Brian Neary? He was here a few minutes ago. He's he's traveling. I just saw him. He's on his way to San Diego, I think. Really? Well, he he was trying to get on. He got on. If he's in the middle of nowhere on the desert there, he's not going to get through very well. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. They, they don't have a lot of uh, service out in the middle well, of the driven, desert? You've driven to L.A., you know, over the grapevine. It's pretty pretty sparse. I don't know. We see, I mean, but that that was a long time ago that I did that, and I expected it to be bad in those days, but today they... They seem to have gotten what happened. I, we lost Charlie, I guess. <laughs> Charlie's having Any, a problem. Anybody else want to leave? Yeah, well, <laughs> next time, I've got to go. 
<laughs> and it's probably storming somewhere. I mean, it's it's a uh, I have thunderstorms here. We had thunderstorms here today. I woke up to thunderstorms. Yeah. Oh, not Ryan Neary. Let's see here. Where is he now? Let's see. I bet he's in his car. He says mm -hmm. he's going to San Diego. Hello, Brian. Can you hear us? Come in, Brian. <laughs> Our man on the scene. Yeah. Um, um, where's he broadcasting from? The Titan? <laughs> too oh, soon. Probably. Is that too soon for a joke, by the way? Yes. Oh, <laughs> Well, you know something, I'll tell you, Obama said something very interesting the other day, and I think it was worth worth considering. He said, we spend so much time worrying about these people in the Titan and the fact that they uh, they all got killed in the Titan, and there were five of them. But when I was in office, there was a boat full of refugees of 200 people who all drowned and nobody seemed to care. Mm. You know, it really, it's a matter of perception because the only thing that made this a big story was the drama behind it, you know? Yeah. Otherwise, we just say, oh boy, I'm never taking the Titan. You know. and, and the fact that it was that it was covered all day long. Oh, constantly, constantly. But, uh, you know, it's, it's um, hello, oh, there he is. There's Brian. <laughs> hello, Brian. Oh, hello. Hello. are you in the oh, desert? Are you, are yeah, you, somewhere <laughs> in Montebello, in uh, I guess it's near Irvine, just south of LA. Why are you going down there? Uh, <laughs> oh, Adrian. They've it's been, uh, yeah, her, that's her. Brian. It's just Brian, uh, Brian, Brian. <laughs> Brian, Brian. Yeah, that's why I call in late. And then I had problems coming in. Oh, I don't know why I had problems getting on. <laughs> no. Yeah, she has a dance dance competition in San Diego, nationals in LA, or in San Diego. So they have a bunch of teams from Utah and Arizona and everything they're competing this week. So Take another shot of her. Just point your camera at her. She looks different. Wait a minute. She looks somewhat different in daylight than she does at night. <laughs> her hair. But the hair is always the same. I would know her by the hair. Oh, the color. The color, well, is that color? No, that's right, right. Yeah, yeah, that's she new. she redid her color. Yeah, she did the color again, so. Because then when she has her hair up and it's braided in the back, it looks like a stripe. It looks like a, like a skunk. So when she's dancing, I can tell her she is right away. <laughs> she's skunk girl, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but here's the thing, Marjorie, Paula, when you were kids, did your parents color your hair at a young age? Oh, my my mother didn't even color her hair. <laughs> oh, OK, uh -uh. Now, did your did your mother color your hair, Marjorie, when you were like uh, Adrian's age, which is what, six now? No. Oh, I, I was waiting for a reply. I think it wasn't uh, even. A, uh, yeah, it wasn't even an idea. But now you do. Right, Brian? Brian? Yes. Yeah, because because probably yes. Adrian wants it, right? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -oh. yeah. Can you hear me, Brian? Oh well. Let's see here. I wish I knew. I wish I knew uh, sign language, and <laughs> I could do it. Are you there, Brian? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I'm having a bad connection. So I just wanted to say hi. Just say uh, hi, everybody. And well, I actually, hi. you know, I'll be honest. You've called to say hi to Mandy. I just want to make sure I got on today so Mandy would be happy. <laughs> no. She doesn't blast me, that's all. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll see you guys. I'll be Bye. listening, so don't talk anything bad, Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> when we finally do the uh, Alex Bennett cruise and all of you join us, uh, then Mandy can meet Brian face to face. Hey, yeah, she's going to slap me too, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy oh, good. that asshole's gone <laughs> <laughs> what happened to charlie <laughs> well, charlie had some Sorry, kind of Brian. problem he was having some problems there but he'll probably call back i'm sure hello vernon how you doing i'm doing well he's down there in kentucky yeah i'm starting my fourth career uh -oh. what yeah what i is uh i started volunteering at habitat as you know 
yeah. back in 2013. And that was career for, number what? No, 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 no. That was just volunteer. I don't consider okay. that a career. Oh, okay. Okay. But I started volunteering with them and I learned the electrician trade building houses wow. and I was learning it on the job. Well, we didn't have to worry about permits because we had a local contractor who would pull the permits for us. Mm -hmm. And we were one of the few chapters in the uh, Kentucky or in the United States, one of the few chapters that had volunteer electricians. Almost all the other chapters throughout the United States contract that out rather than having volunteers do the electrical wiring. Is it it's well, a very, yeah, very specific thing? Right. And the contractor that was pulling the permits for us decided they weren't going to do that in 2023. So we scrambled around and scrambled around. We got another contractor to pull a few permits just until we could get some, get some answers done. It was suggested since I was the leader of the electricians that I take the test for master electrician. So I did and I passed. Yeah, Whoa. congratulations. So now I'm a master electrician and, and, and Habitat has hired me to be their master electrician you, yeah. one more thing and they can pull their own permits do you do you have time to get up here and uh, fix my fuse box <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the thing master electrician is one thing but then you have to have an electrical contractor's license in order to hire yourself out mm. i yeah. don't have the electrical contractor's license i've just got the master electrician license What's which you have to have you have to have a master electrician on staff in order to get an electrical contractor's license in the state of Kentucky. Somebody else is taking the test to get the electrical contractor's license for our local Habitat chapter, but they couldn't do that until we had somebody with a master electrician, which is- Is, that a, written, is that a written test or, or a practical test? Hmm. I took it online. You can actually go to uh, different locations and take the test in person. But I did it online and I did it with this computer that I'm talking to you on. And they had a, a proctor who was watching my every move through the webcam Got to it. make sure make sure I didn't cheat. I was allowed to have certain reference books, but only two, two different reference books were allowed. Anything else was cheating. Hmm. Well, did you have to fix something as well? Or is it, was it all like, uh, um, like an exam exam? No, that, there was a, a practice exam that I ordered and I uh, uh, went through it before I actually tried to sign up and, and take the test. Yeah. And and I did okay on the practice exam. So I said, okay, well, if I did okay on the practice exam, maybe the real thing will be all right. And so far, yeah, I mean, I took it and I passed. Wow, that's, that's cool. Fantastic. Well, congratulations. That's Thank impressive. You. Yeah, of course it's impressive. And I hadn't done any electrical contracting work. I had done any electrical wiring except for my own house until I started doing the house building for Habitat in 2013. Yeah, well, just remember not to stick your finger in a socket. That's right. Yeah. And your, your tongue. Well, you did, they ask, did they ask that question? The test for hot. Did, did, did they ask that question on the test? What happens when you stick your finger in a socket? Was that like one of the questions? No, that was not on the test. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering about that. Hello in Canada to our uh, good friend, uh, the Letterman Podcast. Hey, everybody. How's it going today? How are you? I'm fantastic. I had a really good weekend. I drove with my uh, dad to Vancouver over the weekend to watch my youngest niece graduate and had a graduation party for her. So that was a lot of fun. You graduate from what? I guess... High school. I, yeah. Yeah. Because uh, you wouldn't drive down for a graduation from grade school, would you? I guess it depends on the the, the nephew or the niece, but uh, this one here I would have for sure. But this happened to be a graduation for high school. Oh, okay. Did you go to her boss mitzvah? Uh, she didn't have one of those. I don't <laughs> think she knows how to spell it either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here. Now, here comes Charlie. Let's see what's with Charlie. Um, Hello, Charlie. There's Charlie Wallace. All right, okay, let's see his picture. Now, mm -hmm. Charlie Wallace has it doesn't have a sound on, but he does. Yes, I right, Charlie, can you hear us? Now I can. What was the problem? What you couldn't hear us? I couldn't hear you and I couldn't speak. It said it couldn't connect to my speaker or or my microphone. So what do you do? Just I reboot the machine? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. That's what I tell my wife every time she has computer problems. Just reboot. 
I've, I say that to Marjorie all the time, and she never remembers, which is a very simple thing. You simply turn it off and turn it back on, you know. Mm -hmm. And usually if something's wrong, that resets it, whatever, you know. Because my experience. Yeah. All these little programs like Zoom and stuff are not, you know, not uh, uh, completely perfect. Boy, I didn't say that right, did I? <laughs> I got Charlie, it. how's the heat down there? What? Oh, it's what is the temperature? Is that an old t-shirt or a new t-shirt? I like it's an old one. It's a hundred degrees. Oh. Yeah. Was right. it hotter hotter than that in the last couple of days? Because they've been saying people are keeling over in Texas. Yeah, this it's been uh, it got up to 105 last week. So. Really? That's the air temperature. The heat index got over 120 last week. So. Oh my god! Wow, wow, wow! I, I never remember when I lived there, Texas, getting that hot. I remember. Oh, it's definitely hot than when I first got here. What I remember most about Houston was the humidity. Yep. Because you know you could have like. 75 degrees and the humidity was hell you know so that that i remember uh see this is a program that's kind of interesting because people phone up and we ask them how's the weather where you are <laughs> how's the weather where you are marjorie <laughs> it's not uh, cool there's a lot of hot air in that house <laughs> there you go actually i have the air conditioning on in here because it's 79 degrees outside and this room gets really hot because of all the electronics in it. <laughs> so, you know, uh, but it's mm -hmm. cool in the bedroom, right, Marjorie? Cool in the bedroom. Windows what's, are the, what's, open. what's the forecast for the studio? <laughs> <laughs> you got to come up with something. Who are you talking to? You. <laughs> I said, what's the what's the weather forecast for the office? <clears throat> hot and humid. <laughs> anyway, uh, and hello to uh, Jeff. Jeff, seventy-seven. Seven. <laughs> Rub it in, yeah. Seventy-seven. Two degrees less than us. What can I tell you? See, I look at my watch, and it <laughs> helps me. Tells me everything I would need to know. I'm higher up than you are. Yeah, yeah. So what's been happening since we talked last? Yeah, they. Uh, well, when we talked last, we didn't know what happened to the people on the Titan. Yeah. Now we realize that they were just obliterated. I get. I get. What happened? Yeah. You just get must have happened in you a millionth of a second. Yeah, but then what happens to your parts? I you, would think that the crushing yeah. uh, pressure would just, you know, you just crush like a can. <laughs> and if not, the fish would finish it all. There you go. Yeah, here about this size at that point, right? <laughs> That's what I mean, it does. It does. If you if you were to put a uh, oh say a tin can out there, we're just crushing. Yeah, that what mm -hmm. happens to your body. Yeah, so you know, um, uh, but Marjorie had booked a a, a a the Titan for us for vacation, and we, <laughs> we had to cancel it. So you know, mm -hmm. um, um, I was just looking at vacations. I just found one, Marjorie, you might like. Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam. Ooh. Does that appeal to you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, Thailand, yeah. yeah. That could be fun. Yeah. Is that a river cruise? Uh I I I think it's a it's a river cruise. Yeah. I, I have I just saw it today. Somebody said vacation in these various places. So I assume it's a cruise because I was looking at a cruise site uh that mm -hmm. handles these things. But I think you have to wear either your army or your navy clothes from when you went there the first time. Oh yeah, uh -huh. I, I wasn't there. <laughs> I was in. I was actually. I was in Hollywood. Scary. But hey, enemy planes never got past Santa Monica Boulevard, so I did my part. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> don't don't. Don't give me a bad time because I spent the entire Vietnam, the first part of the Vietnam War, actually, in uh, in Hollywood. So anyway, in fact, it started as I was being 
a Gulf of Tonkin incident took place just as I was being mustered out or right after oh. a, a short time before I was mustered out. And I was mustered out with some guys who came into the Navy with me uh, who had been in the Gulf of Tonkin when that incident took place and told me that nothing went on out there. And we, of course, since then have learned yeah. that nothing did go on out there, but that was our uh, excuse for going in. Thanks to Daniel Ellsberg. Well, Ellsberg revealed yeah. the truth about the Gulf of Tonkin. Mm -hmm. But I kept saying this on the radio. I was over at ABC. I said, kept saying this on the radio. They said, you can't say that. ABC News calls me up. You can't say that. And I said, why not? I said, these are people I talked to who were there. The other scoop I got that they didn't get is uh, was that uh, while Nixon was in Russia, he made a deal for Pepsi-Cola to be distributed in, in, uh, in, in Russia. I thought, that was China. I thought he did that in China. No, he did that in Russia. Yeah. And I went on the air and I said, do you know, while while he was over there, he signed a contract for Coca-Cola, for Pepsi-Cola to be distributed in Russia, which, of course, drove Coca-Cola nuts because they always wanted to get into Russia. <laughs> uh, and um, I get another call from ABC News. You can't say that. That's not true. Blah, 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 blah. Hang up. A couple of days later, it's revealed that he signed a deal for Pepsi-Cola with the Russians when he was in Russia. Phone rings, ABC News. How did you know? <laughs> I said, well, as opposed to you guys, I listen to the ground. I put my ear to the ground and I listen. You know, I, and somebody told me that that's what went on in Russia. And uh, I said, uh, I just was simply reporting what other people told me. I said, if you would just listen, you'd probably know too. So... Those are the two times I made ABC look bad. How, do, how thick do you think your FBI file is? <laughs> well, I don't know. I've never asked for it. I do have one. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I was, uh, I was one of 10,000 people on a list of to people to be audited by the IRS as an enemies list from Nixon. Wow. Yeah, I was on a Nixon enemy list. Not the 1,200, not the initial one, which was, well, that was like graduating from Harvard. You know, <laughs> the VIP list, not the VIP. Uh, but I did make the list of 10,000 and I just never <laughs> asked. For it. I, I was too lazy to ask for it, but I, I hear I was there because I was known to consort <laughs> with leftists. Oh. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah, I had him on as guests on my show. How did you find that one out? You know, I must have taken some real work. I got an FBI file too. <laughs> uh, who said that oh the charge really? yeah, of course you have an fbi file because you were recruited by the cia yeah right yeah yeah he was recruited by the cia folks so you know that right we've talked about this before and he then you turned him down right yeah I turned him down and what did you did you give him a reason i just told him that you know i i, I honestly could not face my friends and let them know that I was working for the CIA. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the 70s, you know. Were they offering you decent money? Uh, we never actually got to the point where we talked about money. Yeah. But yeah. they were going to move me to Washington, D.C. Well, they wanted you because you were very good at uh, your, your... I was fluent in Russian, and I could uh, <laughs> read Russian scientific journals and report on, on what the what they're oh, doing man you're a smarty pants yeah he is a smarty <laughs> pants. I, I almost hate him for this let's beat him up after he's, school he's crazy. <laughs> I, I don't hate him because he almost became a member of the cia i hate him because he's so damn smart <laughs> so charlie could could you understand what what uh, what putin just said on on uh on the air i mean because uh, i could now because i haven't spoken in 40 years so <laughs> in 40 years yeah, because but mean, you would I, under I, you would understand a word here and a word yeah, there. I used right? to love watching that show, The Americans, because they were speaking Russian. And I could pick up a lot of what they were talking about in Russian. Were they talking good Russian or or actor Russian? <laughs> I'm not fluent enough to 
You know the difference. Oh, really? You can't tell dialects, in other words? No, no. Oh, okay. We were taught the Moscow dialect. The Moscow dialect? How's that yeah, different? How's that different than Russian the... in Moscow, yeah. And what are the other dialects? Some other, what are some uh, of the... St. Petersburg and... Uh, other... So it's a, it's the difference between if I talk to somebody in Texas and I talk to somebody in California. Yeah, it's or both. Dialects. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Like that, yeah. yeah. Or Canada. Or Philadelphia. <laughs> eh? Or England. Well, it, Canadians only have one language and it's all... You say A, and that's it. Yeah. We spell the word color with a U. Yeah. You really? You're really trying to be British, aren't you? And you're not. Yeah, you're, but we failed miserably. I know. You're kind of like second class British, you know. Yeah, I think that's that's fair to say. Have a lot of people look at the French as second class uh French Canadians as second class French. I think I think that's probably accurate. Now, for you in the United States, you probably don't realize, but actually on their money is the queen. But now they switched it to the king. It hasn't switched yet. We're waiting for it. Wouldn't you think they would do that immediately? It takes a long time to print that many bills. Yeah, of yeah I mean, to wear out. the coronation had to happen first, which just yeah. fairly recently happened. So I'm, I'm certain it's in process. Well, you better hurry up because this one the guy isn't going to live as long as his mother. <laughs> Are they going to take the queen money out of circulation and not? It won't be legal anymore, or what? No, like our dollar bills have changed over the years. Uh, each each denomination has changed a bunch of times, and I think what happens is is that when a bank gets an older bill, yeah, they now have to send it back or do something with it, and they no longer circulate it. But you still see old five dollar bills and and whatnot. Mm -hmm. yeah so um uh, and of course you don't have any from the old king before queen elizabeth because those... <laughs> my sister has some she collected some and she saved it oh, really wow. yeah are they worth something i mean are they are i they... think the dollar bills are worth about a dollar <laughs> <laughs> no but i wonder you know i mean sometimes those things get to be worth money Oh know? yeah, like some of the coins for sure have uh, have a monetary value there in the collector's market, but I don't think that. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm probably wrong. There probably are, are some bills. You, that are, are you worth telling something. me that your coins before used to have another bird beside the loon? <laughs> the loon, yeah, yeah. We've had all sorts of different coins over the years, different centennial ones, and 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 different events and things like that. I, I am right. You do call your coinage loonies, right? Loonies and toonies, one dollar and two dollar coins. You betcha. Wow. <laughs> but there's bears on the toonie. There's two polar bears on the toonie. Oh, great. Yep. Polar bears, the most dangerous animal on the face uh, of the earth. Yeah. Our nickel has a beaver, our national animal, which now I'm very proud of. Sense. Oh, an animal beaver? Our national animal is a beaver. Oh, I thought, and I thought, it's on the nickel. I thought this was a porn coin you had turned out. And... No, I was waiting for that one. Yeah. <laughs> By oh, the way, Alex, uh, phenomenal uh, get and phenomenal interview with Don Giller the other night. That was awesome. Oh, you like that? Yeah, good. Oh, loved it. Didn't like it. Loved it. Yeah, he oh. doesn't do that stuff. And 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 he asked great oh, questions. Oh, and... To get Don Giller even to call this program. It, yeah. You know. I'm certain he's lurking right now, but he's, uh, he's lurking, but he, he doesn't have enough faith in himself as a human being that he's interesting. <laughs> it's like that when he's on the podcast too, like yeah. when Morty was there, but then sometimes we'll get into a discussion where it's just so good that he has to pop on the, the, the podcast. He's usually in the background though, feeding me stuff through an iPad sometimes and whatnot. But uh, yeah, no, he's, he's fantastic. He told me that you got uh Shecky's hard drives. Oh, oh no, yeah. the Ramble on Friday night, the Ramble, you talked a little bit about it. Tell them, uh, tell them about the hard drives, Marjorie. How many hard drives showed I up here? I like two big boxes full of oh hard drives. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what they were is most of them were external hard drives. I haven't yep. even opened up the one yet that's in on his computer, which I don't know the password, so I just would pull the, the drive and plug yep. it in and look at it. Uh, and, and I probably could even find the password on there if I knew how to read uh, main hard drives. But tell them how many movies and TV shows are I on. estimate that I am now the owner, a proud owner of something like uh, 20,000 films. Whoa! And TV Whoa. shows. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's, my, that's a minor estimate. 
Wow. On just one drive alone, there were like 5,000. <laughs> Oh my God! I mean, he just recorded every movie that ever played on TCM, <laughs> and you know, old films and silent films, and and everything. And the only reason I wanted it was to be able to preserve them, so that somebody didn't throw them out or erase the hard drives or whatever. I'm sure somebody else has these files, like his company that he that he had started a long time ago. Sure, uh, but you know, I I. I they, they, they're there are a lot of films there I got to tell you and what's amazing no porn in all those <laughs> no porn you told me you saw a whole thing of porn that's mine <laughs> <laughs> what no, about Letterman stuff no come across any of that yet no he the Letterman stuff all went to Wayne what's his name uh, no to walter and uh walter. yeah 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 uh uh he had some tapes downstairs of of letterman stuff and that all went to to walter but nothing digitized nothing that i've seen so far digitized about anything right. about the letterman shows no right right, right. But i still have three more drives i've got to get that uh, kathy uh has i uh, was given because she wanted to look at them and then when that, when uh, Randy gets them back, I will get those too. So, you know, but I mean, and Marjorie said, why don't you just start making a, a, a list of all the things on those drives? I said, are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm 83 years old. I'm not going to live long enough to be able to be able to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but, uh, but they're there and they're good. And occasionally I'd pick one off and throw it over on my other hard drive so we could watch it. And uh, uh, Marjorie says, you got any more of these? You know, <laughs> uh, I found a Frank Sinatra concert the other day that, that he had on there. That was only like 50 minutes, but it was broadcast on the BBC. And it I've never seen it before. Never <laughs> seen, I thought I saw everything that uh, the, the Sinatra ever did. You know, I mean, Shecky, the nicest gift he ever gave me was he gave me three, four CDs. And on the four CDs was everything that Frank Sinatra ever recorded, mm. including bootlegs of like concerts and things like that. And I treasure that. I listen to those all the time, you know, so. But anyway, so that's, yeah, I got, I got all those. Uh, and I got the heart, I got the machine. So I've somehow got to uh, get in there and I haven't opened that. I've opened it up and I've looked at it. By the way, this is a Lenovo, right? Which is used to be IBM and now it's Lenovo. You think they make a pretty solid piece of machinery, right? <laughs> I open the thing up and the hard drive is just dangling there and flopping around. <laughs> and, and I'm looking for somewhere where maybe, oh, maybe it fell out of the thing where it was, you know, it was resting. There's nothing there. You just they just got it plugged in there, wobbling around. So, but I, I can remove the hard drive and just put it in, look at it, you know, because I got a thing where I take hard drives and do that. So I, I had a couple of hard drives. I did those. Uh, most of them were the uh, the, the soft, uh, the uh, uh, you know, the external drives. Yep. And uh, one of them is actually an eight terabyte external drive. That's the one that had five thousand movies and tv shows on it well yeah so. I'm gonna keep you busy and i you know i still miss them up and up in the corner here you know yeah, yeah we, we yeah. all do yeah it doesn't just doesn't seem right you know i mean i'm supposed to drop dead before him yeah. <laughs> marjorie's counting on it <laughs> don't do that what don't do that. Don't do that. Don't drop dead. Yeah. Well, you know, every day I get to feel older and older. You know, I'm but older. you are. <laughs> I mean, we Aren't all we are. all? I'm a little light. <laughs> well, my latest thing is I have a, uh, I, I'm oh, worried, worried I have go. multiple myeloma. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh no, I'm feeling Alex. bone pain in my chest. Stop it. Just stop it. <sighs> You know who has multiple myeloma is uh, Tom Brokaw. Oh yeah, I saw that this morning. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, you saw that on CBS Sunday Morning. Yeah, 
He oh, no. has multiple myeloma and he's had it for about five years. So, mm. you know, he, eventually it'll get him, but, uh, you know, it's just a shame to look at somebody like Tom Brokaw, who was always very vital. You know, yeah. I, I met him once. I met him in my neighborhood, the Marina, right after the earthquake, the Loma Prieta earthquake. And he was oh, wow. doing his newscast from a corner in the marina and mm -hmm. i'm walking home and he's walking the other direction coming up obviously just finished his newscast and he as i'm passing him he goes how's it going you know <laughs> and i said we're surviving you know i live in this neighborhood and it's uh you know we're getting along he said, well lots of luck to you and he kept walking yeah mm -hmm. So that was my brush with greatness. <laughs> um, but uh, um, anyway, so the other story, of course, it's a big story. Jeez. Mm -hmm. Whatever's happening in Russia, which nobody can figure out. No. You know, I, and, and hearing about 25% of the reporters mispronounce Wagner. Yes. Man. Wagner, what are you talking Wagner about? Group. <laughs> well, when I first saw it, I saw I saw it as Wagner because I didn't know that it was probably named after Wagner. Who, yeah. And also in that part of the world, it would be pronounced with a V. Uh, so it's Wagner. But I mean, this guy, you know what it was? It was one of these kind of things about I'm going, I'm rooting for. Well, I don't know if I can root for. I can root for. No, nah, he's going after Putin. Eh, but he's, 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 he's the Wagner group, you know? Guys who go down to Africa and keep dictators in power so they can get yep. their blood diamonds. And gold. And gold, yeah. Uh, you know, and I, I'm going, you know, uh, I, who am I supposed to root for here? And then when he decides he's not going to go to Moscow, he beats cheeks over to um uh what do you call it? what's the country belarus. 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 Belarus, yeah. belarus and i'm going well he got away to belarus and then i thought about it the guy who runs belarus is the same is a very good friend of putin's yeah and they're both real dictators yep. and he's not in belarus yet he hasn't left russia no i'm really pissed with this whole thing because i have nobody to root for <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, he's worse than Putin in a lot of ways. Oh, I, I'm, I'm thinking, well, yeah, I'll go and take over for Putin. But, oh, to begin with, have you ever seen a guy who looks more like a Russian leader from central casting? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, Pergozin, he looks more well, like Russian than Putin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he looks like Khrushchev. <laughs> you know, he has that, this is the typical Russian guy they would hire to play a Russian dictator in a drama. Yeah, you know, maybe we should go to Hollywood. That'd be a good place for him. He'd get a lot of work. You know, put a monocle in him. God, it'd be cool. New. I have a feeling there must be hundreds of them. <laughs> Probably. What? There must be hundreds of them. Yeah. Living in that area. Yeah, but I mean, it. It so it it, it, it the whole thing is just really crazy. You know, and we, we're all rooting for Putin to lose power, but this may hurt him anyway. Because he just looked weak while the whole thing was going on. So, you know, but the, the people in Russia don't know any different. They're fed a certain amount, like, like we are fed a certain amount of news mm -hmm. and they're led to believe it. Today in, in Putin's speech, he referred to the Ukrainian government as neo-Nazis. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> been since the beginning. I'm sorry, uh, I, I, I could maybe ask you why are they neo-Nazis and we could discuss whether they're neo-Nazis. But when I know that the leader of Ukraine is Jewish, neo-Nazi doesn't even <laughs> exactly. begin to play. I have to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. go figure that one out. Oh, yeah, well, he's a Jewish neo-Nazi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like being a Jewish Baptist, isn't it? <laughs> so, so what's new down in uh, georgia there or up is yeah it is down in georgia uh mandy what one minute she said a minute i to get to her button 
I just tried it. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, there we go. We just lost Mandy's picture. Now it should come back on probably any minute. Oh, well, okay. Oh, she um, there you um, go. We can hear you now. Okay. Um, not much. We renovated our office last week and we just got back in today and it was not summer here. It was like 60 degrees and all of a sudden it came back like a bitch. It was like 95 today. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. But how did how did they redecorate your office or redo your office? It was just new carpet and paint, but we basically had to move out all the way. So it's yeah. been, I had to work out of another office last week, but on Monday I was actually camping. So that's why I wasn't on the call because we had Juneteenth off. You, you camp, don't you? You like camping? I, that's only the second time I've been. Oh. It was, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's okay. It's pretty fun. Yeah, I don't. I when the if there's no cable, I don't want to go. Well, <laughs> I'm, in camp, I'm in a camper that has AC, so you yeah. know. Oh, All a right. camper that had AC. Oh, but it's wow. just a tiny camper. Oh, oh it, it, I wait a minute. I went camping, <laughs> and then she brought a camper with her. That's not what I call camping. What I call camping is you pitch a tent and no, you very in the woods. People. You know. When you're when you're at the campsites, there's very few people. There's just like here and there people have tents, but most everybody's got a big old camper. Well, the one I'm in is just a tiny one that just has a bed, a bed mm -hmm. and an AC. What in but, England they know, call outside. those in England they call those caravans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. oh, and I was gonna say, thanks for recommending the English. Isn't well, it I, good? I cried. I was so it's sad great. at the end. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. I mean, that plot, that plot at the end was that threw me for a loop. Like, who knew that was going to be? That, yeah, that that you didn't know. That you know. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, it, it and that's why you don't want to spoil it for anybody. No, you know? yeah, it, because you're wondering where is this going? Where is this going? What's with her? Why is she so weird? You know? Yeah. Why yeah. is she so put off? Put off by having a relationship with this guy? You know, things like that. Mm -hmm. And then. All of a sudden, at the end, you find out why, and it all comes into focus. Yeah, you know, and she's she. The reason she's a British woman who goes to the old west. Alex, don't give it away. <laughs> this, <laughs> I'm, I'm giving the plot that you could find in that little listing at the very top of the yes. uh, the Netflix thing, mm -hmm. and she's it's going. A woman she that comes goes, to the west. She goes to yeah. the old west to find the the uh, the man who killed his, her her uh, child. Mm -hmm. and yep. that's the description yep so i have a yep. question i have a question about the english is the whole series as as brutal as as the first episode pretty yes. much i'm trying you to better get used to a lot of killing it, it's one of yep. those things i watched about a month ago and now i've forgotten all the episodes yep. it was violent marjorie it was violent very very violent. very violent very violent yeah, well, it's very, it. it's very well, that's good. The way it was then. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I think it was no more brutal than life was. Yeah, exactly. At that time. At that time. Well, when you said that about you forgot the episodes, I'm also watching 1883. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't, don't watch them separately. <laughs> You're going to get really confused. Exactly. 1883 is really good. Yeah, and 1923. And 1923 is terrific. Yeah. 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 I want to come back on. 1923. I, mean, I watched all of Yellowstone and I thought it was okay, but these are better than Yellowstone. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, and Yellowstone is coming back, but with a new lead because uh, they had trouble with Kevin Costner. He wasn't. I'm not there. watching it. You're not watching it? No, I had enough with. The seasons that we watched. Who did I see that they got? They got somebody. They're thinking of getting somebody. But they've been having a lot of trouble with, with uh, Costner. He didn't want to finish it off. So they don't know what they're going to do. I guess they I guess they could next episode say, hey, he died. He had a heart attack immediately. He fell to the ground. That's it. You know, mm. you move on to the next uh, guy who runs that branch or whatever. <laughs> but anyway, so. And then we went to the movies the other day, didn't we? We went Saturday, yeah. Saturday, Sunday. When did we go? Wednesday. Oh, last Wednesday. 
Yeah, we went to see um, uh, Asteroid City. What'd you say? How was it? I was disappointed. I Aww. would say, you know, Wes Anderson, I can't say ever does a lousy movie or an uninteresting film. But if I had to compare this to his other works, I'd put this just after Bottle Rocket, you know, which is probably the people, the film most of the people say is like the least favorite. I don't think it's that good. I think it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous looking. It, it's uh, it, have you, did you see it, uh, Mr. Chisholm? No, not yet. I was curious. I did see The Flash, though. Oh, really? How was that? Uh, bonkers i can't believe they made that movie what do you mean uh, uh there's things in that happen at the end of that movie especially well actually not even all throughout the movie there are things that happen that i just can't believe they put on screen and i mean i don't want to spoil it but mm. well, well, like if shecky if well, shecky were don't. around he would he would have I'm lots to say about the end of the movie know. well then don't talk about it well no but here's <laughs> the thing it, it's the flash it's a dc comic thing would you say it was good yeah yeah i'll watch it again that for sure i'll watch it again that was yeah with a question mark what's the question it's just a lot like it's cool seeing michael keaton as batman again that's really neat it's uh but all of the world's stuff that happened and some of the worlds that exist in the dc universe that are shown is a lot of nods and a lot of winks and one of them is just to me i can't believe they showed him they showed a super they showed his version of superman that um that that is it's 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 very very interesting that they showed this version of superman even for a moment well here's the thing i never got you know the flash has been a series that's lasted for seven seasons on the cw okay played by mm -hmm. gustin what's his name i can't remember his full name uh, and no uh, nods to it in the film, which is ridiculous considering yeah, yeah, the but, other well, nods. How do you did. then make a movie without this guy being the Flash, since yeah. he did play the part for seven seasons? It yeah. doesn't make much mm -hmm. sense. Although, do they have a way of explaining that? Well, it's not shown on screen, but at the end of the movie, there is certainly a way where they could show that there are different flashes mm -hmm. without a doubt, because they do it for Supermans, they do it for Batmans, they do it for like they show well, that there is all getting so complicated sure. i can see why all these comic strip movies are starting to not do well at the box office i think we've just had too many of them and mm -hmm. now people want something else you know they're almost breathing a sigh of relief because another indiana jones is coming out because it doesn't fall into that you know that comic book category so i mean i i, I think enough is enough already uh second wonder woman film failed this flash is doing terribly at the box office just terribly uh you know you call theater and say when's the next showing and they say what time can you get here you know? <laughs> <laughs> and what was the other one there was another one that was really bad they thought was going to make a lot of money and it did um uh, you know they were had hopes for um not guardians I think it was Guardians, actually. Guardians it, was fantastic. That was a that was a wonderful movie. I I have yet to see it, but I'm sure I will very soon. The yeah. original was great. The original yeah. was fine. It's good picture. Good picture. And yeah, this one will get you crying a couple of times. It's really good. What I you cry at a raccoon? Do you really do that? A hundred percent. You hit the nail on the head. You absolutely cry for Rocket. There's no question. Yeah, because it's the whole story of how he comes to be, how he's mm. made into a whatever rocket is. He's an experiment. Yeah. He's an experimental raccoon. Uh, I noticed Paula has a questioning look on her face because she doesn't care about any of this, do you? Yeah. No. <laughs> I'd like to say that it's not entirely literate, but, you know, I do consider comic books literature. You know, uh, they have their own literature. Oh, I'm impressed with comic books. Uh, um, not so big on on the the, the, the Marvel the, the whole thing. Well, I, I they, they overdid the whole Marvel thing. 
You yeah. know what I'm saying? They had this, what they did is they created the Marvel universe. Well, what does that mean? I have to go see every movie to understand what every other movie is about. I'd like to see one movie walk out and say, I know everything that was going yeah. on in that picture. Now call me old fashioned, but that's the way you make a movie. It's a one-off, you know, even when they were doing Indiana Jones, they were doing James Bond. They never, you never had to know what went on in the other pictures in order to enjoy those pictures. I'll tell and you what I loved. I loved the original Superman. Oh, oh yeah. The, the, the Chris Reeves Superman. I, I remember walking oh, out. I thought, I thought you, you meant Kirk I Allen. Just enchanted by it. I loved it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, Donner did an incredible job on that on yeah. that film. Yeah, yeah, he certainly does. But uh, what happened to where is? Oh, there he is. Okay, I wanted to make sure we had everybody here. Um, uh, it, it uh, I just, you know, I just think that the I went to see like the Avengers, and I went I went to see the Avengers Endgame. Okay, didn't understand what was going on there. Because I had to watch all the other movies yeah, yeah. in order to understand what was going on in this movie. And I'm sorry, you know, I want to go to a movie, sit there and get a singular experience. Now, it can be part of a series, but James Bond movies are a singular experience. The Indiana Jones pictures were singular experiences. You could watch, you know, the last uh, Indiana Jones picture and not really have to worry about knowing what went on in the rest of them. Mm -hmm. Even though in that picture, there was one reference to the first picture, but that was it. Well, Otherwise you either like the characters, you don't like the characters. but mm -hmm. end game. I mean, what is, I didn't even know half the characters who were in there. They had dropped off characters along the way that I didn't even know existed. Um, you know, so, I mean, it, it just, it, it, it a bit much. I liked Iron Man when it was by itself, you know, in a standalone picture. But this whole idea of building a universe, and then, of course, DC came along and said, well, we can't be outdone. We have to have our own universe. But theirs was a total failure for the most part. You know, their pictures didn't do very well. So i tell you something that's really kind of neat um, um, here in, in, uh, in this area. Uh, there's an outdoor concert in which they show a movie and the Cleveland Orchestra plays and the the, uh, the the next one that's coming is Jurassic Park. Oh, that'll be fantastic. Yeah, yeah I think it will. But they play the music for the movie? Live, yeah. The, 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 Live. Yeah. yeah. So what do they do? Get a copy of the movie that's been stripped of the music? Um, it, it's coordinated uh, electronically to to the movie. I'm not sure how they do it, but I I watched it. I watched them do it. This was a an indoor thing at um, yeah. in, in Cleveland with uh, uh, to West Side Story, and it was perfectly. It was live music on stage, the orchestra on stage, and showing the movie at the same time. And the conductor had. Uh, um, like an electronic thing in front of him. So I, I don't know how they do it, but uh, it's, well, it's, it's there, there are ways of doing it. They have like called, they call click tracks and things like yeah, that. Yeah, it's absolutely wonderful. But uh, one thing that I missed because I was supposed to see it and they canceled it in the Bay Area. They were supposed to bring this thing in where they brand Looney Tunes cartoons with a live orchestra. Oh, I would love that. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, uh, that to me was would have been wonderful, you know um but i mean uh, it, it it's um well i'll tell you what we did do marjorie came with me we went to the paramount theater in oakland and mm -hmm. i took her to see a five and a half hour movie silent film mm -hmm. napoleon with wow. carl davis who does a lot of uh, music for silent films and an orchestra he was leading the whole picture you know uh, sometimes in those days when they had a movie that was long they would go into a period of the film where they would use an organ and stuff like this but no this was the full-sized orchestra playing every minute of this film by the way they gave us a dinner break three hours <laughs> um, and that was something we went to with Shecky and that it has another special reason in our history in that, that that was a movie that we went to California to see, Marjorie and I, and decided and we were waiting out, we would go up to Lake Tahoe and get married. Yeah. 
So, you know, that was a, that was a very special event in our lives. And she didn't really want to see the movie. She, I don't know. It's not a film. Three, five and a half hours. Were you ever bored, Marjorie? No, it was great. Yeah. And at the end, they had this, the, the uh, last half hour, the screen opens up to three screens, much like they did with Cinerama. But exactly. to three screens. And it's like the whole film is projected on three different screens. And that's the way it was originally done. And it was just, just the most glorious time I've had in a movie theater, I think, in my life. It was great. And after it was over, I said to Margaret, what would you think? She says, I thought I'd be bored. Where did the three, five and a half hours go? Oh, yeah. yeah. Has anybody heard me think about Oppenheimer? Oppenheimer. And I, oh, I can't wait for it to come I'm, out. I'm so excited like, about that movie. It's yeah. an IMAX movie? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He filmed it entirely in IMAX. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Nolan, he's never had a dud as far as I'm concerned. Well, he has. I th- did you see Tenet? I, I really love, I love Tenet. I've really? watched it five times. Yeah. I, uh, uh, you know, I do like his work. Okay. And this, I think, it, well, it's a story I want to see, you know. Yeah. I mean, ask Charlie about Oppenheimer. Yep. You know. His favorite movie, I think my favorite movie of his outside of uh, Dark Knight is uh, The Prestige. Do you remember that oh, one? Oh, yes, absolutely. Prestige Love that movie great. so much. It was terrific. Yeah. David Bowie as Nikola Tesla. That was so <laughs> genius wow. casting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all about... Uh, it's all about magi- ma- magicians, yeah. And, yeah, and the way in which magic is done, and the, you know, you have the opening part of the magic. They give a big list of it at the beginning, and then the final thing is the prestige, you know. And uh, uh, this this movie is about. Uh, well, I, I have to go back and watch it again to tell you what I'm about. I can't remember the exact plot, but I remember loving it and watching. Two rival ma- magicians, yeah. Two rival magicians, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, it, uh, it it's um, it, I won't even tell you about it. But if you ever see it available, watch it. You will it's enjoy. Great. It. It's great. It's um, so. great. But Oppenheimer looks fantastic. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. It's the only film I'm really looking forward to. I was looking forward to a- Asteroid City, and I think maybe if I didn't like it, it was because I expected too much out of it. I think that's what happened with me. Yeah, yeah. It's a good little film. There's nothing wrong with it. Beautifully the, done. You know, uh, some moments of it made me really laugh. Very funny, you know. But overall, you walk away going, eh. Well, when you compare it with some of his other movies, you know. Well, he's going to have to, for me, he's going to have to go a long way to surpass uh, the Hotel Budapest. Or uh, Isle of Dogs. Which well, one was the Hitler Youth one? The Hitler Youth one. Oh no, that was that was what's his name, the uh, 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 New Zealand director. Oh, that's right. That wasn't Wes. I'm sorry. You're, I get that one confused. I always think that looks like a Wes Anderson movie. You're yeah. thinking of Jojo uh, Rabbit. Yeah. yeah. Jojo Rabbit. Yeah. Wonderful film. Yeah. Great. Wonderful film. But you I could, always think that's a Wes Anderson movie. Yeah, yeah, it's a kind of film that Wes Anderson could have made, but he didn't. You know. Uh, but it's a good movie. It's a great movie. Charlotte Johansson was in it. Yeah, yeah, uh, and uh, you know, and she she was in this thing too. Was yeah, it? and she was in the Prestige. Yeah. You're, oh wow. You're right. She was. I forgot. The only thing I'm thinking of is Scarlett Johansson was in in Asteroid City. But then again, so was everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> there were what about twenty stars in that film? Something easily, like that? easily. And then you suddenly realize that this uh, this um, Oh, what do you call it? This alien that comes down to Earth is you don't notice it because he just simply did the motions. Is the alien was Jeff Goldblum? <laughs> you don't realize it because you know you don't see Jeff Goldblum there. What were you gonna say, uh, Mr. Ch- uh, oh no, I'm saying that's perfect. Jeff Goldblum is an alien. I was like, yes, right on. Yes, of course. Uh, well, anyway, listen, uh, we're uh, we're kind of. Um, at oh our end, end of our little gathering today. 
Uh, and uh, Marjorie has been here. And now we're going to go and we're going to have what? Sushi for dinner and lobster rolls. Mm. Oh, I wanna... Huh? I want to tell you quick. I've apparently been penciled in for the weekend of the August 25th to come to New York. Oh, great. Um, okay. Mind us the, when, the, as we get closer. The, yes. Oh, gee, I'm sorry, but Brian's coming to stay at our apartment. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yes, I, I've been told that I'll pencil you in, but I'm really busy. No, that'd be really nice. I'll go, I'll have something to eat and, you know, whatever. You'll come up to our neighborhood. You'll get to meet black Harlem. Yeah, I, I, I know you don't have any black people down in Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> Some Marjorie on Monday, so you don't have to bother you. Oh, okay. It, <laughs> it's uh, that sounds great. Looks, I uh, look forward to it. Uh, thank you so much to uh, 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 uh Paula Levin, uh, and um, uh, oh, you know, you've been very quiet today, Charlene. Yeah. You know, I'm so boring. You guys are also interesting, and I'm so boring. <laughs> well, what's, what's interesting is, is that you and Edward Berger are always the first two people waiting for me to sign on. <laughs> and it's amazing because it's the two of you that have the least to say in a different hour. Yeah, I do my audio check. Uh, that's why I come in early. <laughs> you got to make sure your, your uh, microphone is working. Right, right. right. Um, thank you, Charlene. Thanks to Mandy. Always a pleasure to have you here, Mandy. Len? Always great having you. You didn't say much of anything today either, did you? A little quiet. All good. Some days you're chatty and some days you're not, you know. And thanks, of course, to the Letterman podcast, because that's what he Peace has. Peace and love, everybody. You know. And uh, uh, we'll see you soon. Uh, our good friend Vernon Nunn down there in Kentucky. Uh, and finally, of course, uh, Charlie Wallace, who's down there in deep in the heart of oh. Texas. Yeah. Anyway, and finally, uh, we say good night and goodbye to all of you as Edward Berger signs us off by saying, "That's all, folks." Bye, bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye.